Progress today moves at breakneck speed. The possibilities are huge. So are the challenges. Amid continued advances, too many people are left behind. At UNFPA, we strive for a world where every person can exercise their human rights. Getting there is not easy, but one thing is clear. Business as usual is not enough. We must innovate for change. We must make the most of cutting edge technology. We must think big, think collaboratively, think from the bottom up instead of the top down. Fearlessly take calculated risks that can deliver on a mass scale. Through innovation, we can lead the global drive for breakthrough solutions and achieve transformative change for women and girls. Let's innovate for 2030. Our blueprint for innovation is the 2030 Agenda and the SDGs. The Agenda imagines a world with universal access to sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights. Let's innovate to get to zero. Zero maternal deaths. Zero unmet need for family planning. Zero violence against women and girls. Getting to zero depends on all our programs harnessing innovation to unblock bottlenecks and scale up results. Let's innovate to be bold, vocal and visible. Innovation ecosystems link people and ideas. Collaboration speeds transformation. We can channel its power by boldly mobilizing people to see, understand and act on our mission. So let's move. It is time to make innovation part of our organizational DNA. We must explore, test, learn, partner, seek out innovative financing, and replicate what works far and wide. For realizing the SDGs, for getting to zero, for every woman and young person without exception. Innovation is our future, starting here starting now. The possibilities are huge, starting here, starting now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you who have joined us today and a special welcome to our distinguished guests. Welcome to this UNFPA Global Roundtable on Innovation to Accelerate Progress for Women and Girls. My name is Monica, I'm UNFPA's representative in Geneva, and I'll be your moderator today. And today we have lined up for you a stellar panel. We have invited member states, industry experts, thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and global advocates. And we're all, all here today to discuss innovative ways to remove barriers between women and girls and their rights and choices. We will hear about global innovative strategies and solutions, pitches on game-changing innovations and concrete proposals on the way forward. But before we dive into these interesting discussions, I'm very honored to give the floor for welcome remarks to an FPA's executive director, our amazing Dr. Natalia Cannon. Natalia, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors Jorki Polkinen of fin Finland, Carolyn Opongontiri of Ghana, Anne Dostert of Luxembourg, Martin Billa Herman of Denmark, very distinguished panelists, young people, colleagues, and all friends of innovation gathered here today. Welcome. I'd like to thank you for joining us. This high level discussion on innovation as an accelerator to drive meaningful progress for women and girls and for all is extremely important. And that's why I'm so excited and delighted to be here with you. This platform is uh, an opening for forward thinking leaders who have committed to find innovative and sustainable solutions for global challenges to pose the questions to which we need answers. Our United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has put it like this. Without innovation, there is no way 
we can overcome the challenges of our time. More than ever before, the status quo is not an option. And indeed, two years of this COVID-19 pandemic threaten two decades of progress, especially for women and girls. The escalating threats and challenges that we face today demand bold approaches, demand out-of-the-box thinking. And that will require that all of us begin to act differently as well. We must leverage all of the knowledge, all of the technology and the resources that are available to us. Over the past three years, UNFPA has been able to train over 20 young innovation fellows. Last year, we awarded through an innovation fair out of 156 submissions, awards for winners of innovation, culture, and impactful ideas. Among them, teams in Papua New Guinea, Ghana, many more using mobile tech, but also homegrown village tech. Can we work smarter, better? I have to say, yes, we absolutely can. Here is a wise East African proverb. You can never cross the ocean unless you dare lose sight of the shore. At UNFPA, we're reimagining. We're re reimagining the delivery of our programs to meet the urgent sexual and reproductive health and rights and protection needs of people that we serve in community after community, where we break down barriers that stand between that woman, that girl, and her ability to access high quality services. These efforts, unfortunately, still do not match the scope and the scale of ambition that I would like to see, not when there's still more than 200 million women and adolescent girls who cannot access modern family planning methods of their choice. And sadly, statistics mean people, over 800 women die each day from pregnancy and childbirth related complications. Certainly not when one in three women are uh, expected to experience gender-based violence throughout her lifetime. What UNFPA wants to do is to reach women and girls who otherwise would be left behind. And in fact, we want to prioritize them and put them first so they're no longer among the most vulnerable. We've launched the Equalizer, which is UNFPA's Innovation Accelerator Fund. And this Equalizer provides new funding and support for the most promis promising innovations and ideas. Very grateful to those of you who are contributing with the aim of scaling up solutions that can deliver the greatest impact, especially again, for women and girls who otherwise would be marginalized. This new fund is not about doing business as usual. What we want is business unusual to turn that tide look past the shore and fast track efforts to safeguard the health of women and rights, the, the, of women and girls' rights globally and in communities. So today we have a dialogue. It's offering us a unique opportunity to allow and to draw on the wisdom, the experience of others and to leverage the power that we hold, the power of partnership to create real and lasting change. Dear partners, let me just close by emphasizing that innovation is critical for UNFPA, certainly for the world and for the women and girls who need us. Together, let us use innovation. It's a game changing force for good. And let's start by increasing the availability of digital public goods, goods that enable knowledge and data sharing. We can empower women and girl entrepreneurs and support their innovations. And we can nurture creative problem solving and engaging bright young minds. With innovation and ingenuity, I believe that we can and we will tackle some of the world's most pressing challenges and get to the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. Get that right back on track despite the pandemic. As we imagine our common future and address the needs of a world, emerging from that pandemic. It's going to take all of us, governments, international organizations, civil society, private sector partners, 
and the United Nations to join hands to mobilize what must be transformative change. You could never cross the ocean until you dare lose sight of the shore. So let us seize those possibilities in front of us, explore those new frontiers, no matter how far offshore they may take us. It's going to take nothing less to achieve full equality, full rights and choices for all. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, dear Natalie, for these inspiring words and also for telling us that sometimes it's okay to lose sight of shore uh, because the challenge is it's worth it. And also to invite, to invite us to reimagine a world where we can disrupt inequalities, realize the SDGs, remove the barriers. Thank you. Thank you for this. We couldn't ask for a better start to this uh, very important conversation. And now um, let's dive straight into our first panel to discuss precisely the, how to challenge the status quo in development and in the, in the possibilities to harness opportunities for disruptive innovations. So many words that I really like. In this panel, we are joined by some very distinguished guests. Uh, His Excellency Jirki Pulkinen, he is the Ambassador for Innovation of Finland. Uh, Mrs. Caroline uh, opongo Nidri, she is the Deputy Representative uh, Deputy Permanent Representative of Ghana to the UN, and Mrs. Anne Dostert, she is the Deputy Permanent Representative of Luxembourg to the United Nations. And distinguished guests, I will start with a question. Uh, the UN Secretary General has encouraged everyone to, and I'm going to quote him, be bold, be revolutionary, and disrupt. Because without innovation, there is no way we can overcome the challenges of our times. So from your perspective, what can be done to harness innovation, to truly disrupt in, uh, inequalities. And I'm gonna start, no particular order, but I will start to welcome uh, His Excellency Yurki uh, Purkinen to answer what can be done to harness innovation to truly disrupt inequality. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, uh, Greeting from Finland, you know, we are in the middle of snow here and a uh, storm is coming. Uh, it's, uh, innovation is uh, really interesting uh, approach uh, to everything in development, you know, uh, but nowadays we can see that, you know, uh, more and more people are speaking about uh, disruptive innovation as a solution to change the, uh, the development uh, work uh, better and transform everything. And I, I fully agree. This is this is the way to go. But you know, now uh, I think you know I try to be a little bit uh, provocative, also looking the other side of the disruptive innovations. You know, uh, but let's see let's see first in why disruptive innovation is good for for UNFPA and all other UN agencies and development uh, agencies. Well, you know, first uh, by nature, uh, it is addressing population that are underserved or neglected by the current business models and ecosystems. That applies everywhere in all the other fields as well. Just like Henry Ford's idea of conveyor belt made cars cheaper and more affordable for everyone. And Netflix, you know, a few years ago, brought movies as a service to everybody, uh, everybody's living room uh, with $9 per, per month, you know, as less than a single movie ticket. You know, uh, this is really a game changer in, in a movie. Uh, uh, and in line with this, you know, uh, UNFPA could also change the game uh, by using uh, and developing disruptive innovation to find more inclusive ways to support families, women and children who are still without access to current offering of healthcare, social protection, as well as uh, family planning. So it is there, the possibility is there. It's very logical uh, that uh, when UNFP mission is also supported this, this disruptive innovation. But you know, if we look the other side of the coin, uh, there, there is a you know a little bit more darker nature of, of disruptive innovation. Disruptive innovation usually destroy current business logic. It destroys the value networks and ecosystems that uh, that the current services are based on. Uh, many existing service providers may grow obsolete and disappear. Uh, quite usually, when new disruptive innovation service will uh, scale up, also the current market segments and also uh, destroy those you know, who are at, uh, who are not quickly enough to, to adopt the new uh, business models. Therefore, you know, uh, just logically, it can also harm UNFP, uh, UNFPA 
itself and, and the current uh, partners, if they are quick enough to change their position and uh, to create a new value networks and business models for themselves. So it's a risky game, you know, but you know, it's risky, risks are sometimes better to take. Now the question is that, you know, is it possible to avoid this creative chaos, but still harness the power of disruption? I think, you know, there are many, many academics who say, yes, it is possible. Uh, uh, there are incremental innovations also that are changing also the current uh, models more effective, more accessible and the better for the people. So uh, basically balancing with disruption and incremental development and, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, goal-based uh, development work that, uh, that uh, we are used already, it is possible to balance uh, the, uh, the uh, innovation work in a way that, you know, uh, the, uh, maybe the outcome is, is even more than uh, through the disruption or uh, kind of incremental uh, alone. So I believe this is something that I, I believe that uh, also UNFPA could actually adopt uh, in the uh, new innovation program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mbata. Truly uh, interesting and, uh, and quite thought provocative. But well, before we went online, you promised us you would be thought provocative and also disruptive. But I think it's, uh, it's very interesting for our teams and uh, for our listeners um, to think that um, innovation and disruption need to be tackled uh, in a very uh, coherent but also forward-looking uh, manner. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. And uh, and now I will um, uh, I will pass the floor to um, Mrs. Uh, Caroline Opongo Nitri. She's the deputy uh, representative, deputy permanent representative um, of Ghana to the UN, and she's going to share with us some thoughts on some of the methods to harness innovation and disrupt inequality. The floor is yours. Thank you, Monica, and hello to everyone. So um, I'm going to um, respond by citing examples from Ghana, how we've used innovation to drive change in our country. So the call by the Secretary General challenging the world to embrace innovation is in the right direction and underscores the critical role in the achievement of the SDGs. As you know, Ghana has embraced innovation and recognizes its importance as a key accelerator towards the bridging the inequality gap and promoting the country's overall development. Data from the recently held 2021 population census in Ghana indicates that young people of 35 years old and below make up 23.4% of the population. With such a large youth, youth ball, it is imperative for us to focus on the engagement and inclusion of young people in every facet of national life to enable us to harness the demographic dividend. So we in Ghana have, um, with the support of UNFPA, developed programs for young people. An example is the Youth Leaders Fellowship Program. This program empowers young people through various training programs and exposes them to work in the local and international field to enable them understand and be prepared to meaningfully participate in their future places of work. We have people mentoring and sharing their uh, experiences with these young people. Also, um, as you know, a mere 20 years ago, mobile phones were a rarity that some feared would become a developed world status symbol and another sign of the technology gap between the rich and poor. But today, Poorest people in most inaccessible places have mobile phones and often a smart one. In many ways, it has transformed our lives. This has led to a remarkable difference in communications within Ghana and also outside the world. In healthcare delivery, Ghana is also in the front lines by developing innovative technologies such as the Zipline drone system. This system which delivers medical supplies such as blood and vaccines to inaccessible medical facilities. And it is critical for the achievement of universal health coverage if we really want to ensure that no one is left behind. This is also being used currently to distribute and deliver the COVID-19 vaccines to hard to reach areas. Ghana has also put significant investments into innovative ways of using technology 
to make systems more efficient by digitalizing processes such as passport, license, and land acquisition, among others. Additionally, another innovation that is the first of its kind globally was the institution and implementation by UNFPA and government of an independent, independent monitoring mechanism for the census. We currently had a census, population census in Ghana, and this utilized international experts across, from across the continent. The resultant certification of the quality of the census by that process has provided global credibility for the census. So in almost all of these instances, innovations have been driven by young people, the young people of the world, especially the youth of Ghana and Africa, have demonstrated their ingenuity and innovative prowess. They have been bold, revolutionary, and disruptive, especially in the tech space. What is lacking is the necessary funding and support to transform their ideas into reality. It is in conclusion, I would say that it is time for African governments to unleash the creative force of its young people to overcome inequality and other challenges of our time. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for providing us with such good examples on, you know, on how innovation can accelerate uh, the realization of the SDGs for focusing on reaching those who've been left uh, behind and also for bringing up such concrete and inspiring examples on how this uh, can be done. And of course, the call for investment. Thank you so much. And last but not least, I'm going to give the floor to uh, Anne Doster from the Mission of Luxembourg. And um, I think you're going to share with us some of your views on how we can harness innovation to disrupt inequalities. Anne Doster, the floor is yours. Thank you, Monica. Good morning, everybody from New York. Um, the 2030 Agenda recognizes innovation as critical to accelerating progress towards global development and aspirations, which prominently include gender, in gender equality and the reduction of inequalities. As such, the promotion and application of innovation for development is a key commitment of Luxembourg's development strategy. At present, Luxembourg's innovation efforts revolve around four key areas of intervention inclusive and innovative finance, digitalization, ICT solutions in humanitarian crisis, and the support to innovation-oriented multi-stakeholder partnerships. As inequality is often expressed in women's unequal access to financial means, innovative finance solution can play a vital role in leveraging development impact. Luxembourg harnesses its financial know-how, infrastructure, and private, partner, private sector partnerships to scale up limited financial resources and promote the financial inclusion of SMEs and women entrepreneurships in developing countries. Blended finance mechanism and impact financing solution play a key role in this regard. As a social investment fund, with a particular focus on the most excluded, the Luxembourg Microfinance and Development Fund invests in emerging financial service providers that work hard to provide a better life for micro entrepreneurs who need reliable and fair supply of basic financial services, such as microcredits, a safe place to keep their money, money transfers, and micro insurances. To attract private entities that aim for social impact and financial return, impact investors are, producted, are protected by an initial absorption of losses by the Luxembourg government. This innovative first loss funding approach is also being adopted in relation to the SDG-oriented impact investment platforms, such as the SDG 500, whose objective is to raise $500 million uh, in investments to six impact funds uh, targeting businesses in agriculture, finance, energy, education, and healthcare. Uh, it's Luxembourg supported ABC Block Smart Africa and Build Sub Funds, are three initiatives managed by Bamboo Capital Partners that illustrate the achievement of development impact through financial leverage. Through its commitment to target predominantly women in its financial inclusion and innovative finance intervention, Luxembourg acknowledges the crucial role of women in the transition towards a more equitable and sustainable future. Another cross-cutting factor to harness innovation 
action for addressing inequality concerns digitalization. Given its potential to enable accessibility of services for vulnerable populations in remote areas, digital innovation can help provide girls with access to education, help women help propel women-owned businesses and facilitate the provision of reproductive healthcare services. In connection with digital innovation, Luxembourg also puts to use ICT technology to tackle humanitarian crisis. Uh, in that context, a good example is the emergency.lu platform. It's a satellite-based telecommunications platform created to establish communications, internet and phone after a disaster. So the platform has proven very crucial in supporting the coordination of human organizations in the field. Lastly, Luxembourg supports innovative-oriented partner initiatives, which can serve to disrupt inequality through bottom-up experimentation and social innovation. Luxembourg's recent contribution of 1 million, of 1 million euro to UNFPA's acceleration fund is hence crucial in driving innovation beyond technology to social norms and laying the groundwork for long-term gender equality. In conclusion, innovation if based on a comprehensive and mutually reinforcing approach, can foster women's empowerment and be, significant, and be very significant in reducing inequalities. However, rather than mere beneficiaries of preconceived innovative solutions, women and girls must also be the carriers of innovative change. Luxembourg, in line with its feminist foreign policy, will continue a reliable partner in enabling them to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Dostert. It was I mean, it was very clear all the examples that you've mentioned and how they can be leveraged to remove the obstacles um, that prevent women and girls from accessing their rights and choices, but also a broader picture on how um, member states can work with the UN agencies and other partners to really leverage on this. And and I, I just wanted to share with all of you um, that we we also did uh, our internal uh, conversation on this, and it was really really exciting we had 12 innovation awards winners last year for innovation culture and impactful innovation and it was um really uh, encouraging to see the whole organization mobilizing itself to show our um, work on that area and we had more than i think 150 submissions um and by popular vote we selected the winners for each each region and it was a set of amazing examples of our innovation culture from census in ghana to apps for gender-based violence survivors and telemedicine and drones for health. It was really fully aligned with what you've just shared with us. And this also makes us believe that regardless of the fact that the path is still long, Natalia, we are ready to leave the shore and set a sail uh, on our path to innovation. And I think the Secretary General would be proud of this panel too, because I think we were all bold, revolutionary and disruptive. And and with this, I want to thank you all for your excellent contributions. I'm looking forward to seeing you again, meeting you again on our road to innovation. And I think we have now a little bit of a surprise. We have a whiteboard where we summarized uh, the key points of our discussion. And voila. So what you can see here is uh, we have a live artist Who's, uh, who's trying to um, um, encapsulate the most um, forward-looking messages we got uh, and the main ideas. And, and the key buzz, the key word is really innovation for acceleration, progress for women and girls. We have to evolve, revolutionary and disruptive, harness to realize the SDGs. And I really like the fact that it's women and girls leading the way to transformation because it's also about the future of, of women and girls. And um, I like the fact how, Pablo, you've managed to truly disrupt inequalities. And I think that we've had multiple examples today on how we can leverage what's being done, take it to the next level, and in partnerships. That was something uh, that almost all speakers mentioned because it's um, it's too much of a, of a big job to be done uh, in, uh, in isolation. And I think that the road is long, it's steep, but with an accelerator, with an FPA's accelerator, I think that we will be able to achieve uh, the SDGs. So I think this is quite a nice summary of our uh, first panel.
And I think that this will also inspire uh, next panels. And now um, let us invite you um, to watch innovation happening. Let's watch a video um, on an innovative project uh, developing. It is called Smart Bags, and it helps to keep girls in school in Uganda. Let's see how. My name is Jamila Mayanja. I'm the founder and team lead of Smart Girls Foundation Uganda, an organization that empowers um, and mentors young women and girls. Um, in 2012, I, I met a few girls when we were doing mentorships in rural areas um, who are staying out of school because of their messes, um, because of menstrual poverty, they couldn't afford cloth pads to use. So this made me think on a way on how better could I make these girls more convenient and more privately and confidently be able to use the cloth pads, those are reusable pads that we've provided to them so that they are able to stay in school nevertheless with what we've given them. So I came up with a smart bag that could be able to help them carry their unused reusable pads and also if they are to, they are to get to school and they, don't, they can't access wash facilities. Um, we noticed these girls were behind school work because they didn't access electricity at home. When they were done with their housework, they didn't have light to read their books. If they had the light, it was quite limited. This led us to also innovate the next, the other bag, which is the recycled solar smart bag. And the bag would still have the same functionalities, like the recycled smart bag, where they would be able to carry their unused reusable pads, their soil pads, but also with it, it has a solar panel that charges a light that when they get home after their housework, they're able to use this light to read their books. When we first launched this product, we, were, we won a challenge on Open Ideal, um, where UNFPA Innovation gave us a grant to release out over 5,000 bags. These bags have created a new way in keeping girls in school during their messes. You can join me in making sure we reach one million girls by either buying a bag or by supporting a girl to have this, one of these bags. Beautiful, how we can make difference in so many girls' lives and uh, in uh, keeping them uh, in, in keeping them in school. And I think that the, also one of the goals of this um, roundtable to bring solutions, to um, bring ideas to the discussion. And I know that our panel, our next panel, will be also amazing on this conversation. And now let's dive straight into panel two to discuss the power of partnerships and how to remove barriers between women and girls, the rights and choices through game changing innovations. And this is the challenge that we have for our amazing panel today. And we are very privileged to be joined by the following panelists that will need no further introduction. And uh, Darren Tang is the Director General of the World Intellectual Property Organization. Matthias Berninger is the Executive Vice President Public Affairs, Science and Sustainability, Health, Environment and Safety from Bayer AG. Doreen Bogdan Martin is the ITU Director of the Telecommunication Development Bureau. And Jan Willem, the Vice President, Global Head of Government and Public Affairs in Royal Philip. Now, this is a different panel. This is, a, let's call it a pitching panel. So, dear panelists, if you were to pick up just one game changing innovation that UNFP and partners can do to remove barriers from women and girls and increase their rights and choices, what would be? And I'm going to start in no particular order, but I will start to give the floor to uh, White Rose uh, Director General, Darren Tang. Please, teach us again changing innovation to remove barriers and increase the rights and choices for women and girls. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Monica. Uh, Natalia, good to see you. And also, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the participants and my fellow speakers. Uh, my pitch is simple. Education is what we need. Uh, and, and let me give you some very quick stats. Um, according to UNICEF, 130 million girls are out of school, uh, including 32 million at the primary school age, 30 million at the lower secondary age, 
and 67 million at the upper secondary, upper secondary school age. And I think in some regions, right, this it's almost 50% of all girls in the batch uh, are not in school. Uh, in adolescence and uh, throughout uh, most of the developing world, the stats uh, for, for, for girls to drop out of school uh, are, are not good for in terms of their choices in life, in terms of rights. So my pitch to everyone is that we really, really need to get get education technology uh, into the hands of, of these girls because that's going to give them the chance to educate themselves, to raise awareness of their rights, to raise awareness of what's going on in the world out there. And this is going to help them to, you know, as the UNFPA says, to, to increase their rights and choices. Uh, what do we need to do? Well, I think I, we heard some the earlier panel talk about financing. And, and I think what's happening is that education, and, and, and it's been accelerated by the pandemic. It's been a downside, but the upside is that education doesn't need to be physical anymore. It can be digital. And we need to provide tech-driven solutions that are first uh, digital and at a distance uh, so that we can reach the women and girls, right, who are experiencing limitations to mobility and safety because of their personal situation. It needs to be accessible by everyone. So that means that we need to require uh, low bandwidth and we need to also create technologies that are not going to be uh, relevant only to high-tech and smartphones, but even to, to simpler uh, first-generation, second-generation phones. Uh, it needs to be asynchronous and tailored, which means that it needs to speak the language of the community. We all learn differently, so we need to make sure that, that, that we can uh, provide these education options right, to people who have, who have different ways of learning. And it needs to be collaborative because it's not just about educating the girls, but the community needs to come together and support that, 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 that technology and the deployment of that technology meaningfully. Now, the cost of these technologies has dropped a lot. It has become a lot more competitive. There are many proprietary and open source products. Uh, the cost for learners and institutions have also decreased. Um, and I think that if we spend time and attention on this, we can, we can really scale this up. Uh, and Natalia says we need to find things that can scale. And of course, the foundation to all this is, I think Natalia, you mentioned digital public goods. And I think access to internet, access to, to, uh, to, 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 um, the, to that, right? It's going to be quite an important piece of that. So I think my pitch to everyone is, Let's look at education as a very, very powerful enabler uh, coming from Singapore, coming from Southeast Asia. Right? That has been our experience. When we educate the people, when we take these resources seriously, give them the choices to learn, right? Then naturally what follows is that they are better able to exercise their rights uh, and then to make the right choices in life. So thank you for that. I look forward to hearing from my fellow panelists. Well, I think we already have a winner there. Thank you so much, DG. It was um, it was brilliant, and it's really going to the to the root cause of um, the barriers and um, and leveraging on that to remove uh, what prevents women and girls from accessing the rights and choices. And it was brilliant. Thank you so much. And now, uh, Matthias um, also um, pitch for us a game of changing innovation. Mr. Bergen, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Monica. Um, I think that uh, the key innovation doesn't really look in the what, but in the how. Um, my sense is that we are at half time of achieving the SDGs and we are not doing well. Of course, we can claim a pandemic for it, but how we approach the SDGs so far uh, needs innovative thinking. Uh, I believe that in the, at the intersection of uh, the uh, young uh, women and girls uh, we already talked about, um, the public support, uh, institutional support, and business. We need to just game change the how. We need to be willing to collaborate in ways we have been hesitating to do in the past. So I think the business community, especially those who play a role in femtech, need to be much more open to this collaboration, but also their work needs to be more embraced uh, by the public sector. That's the how that will change a lot and bring many of the great examples in a stage where they can be scaled up and transferred from one community to another. But fully, fully agree then. And, and, and I think this this idea that not the what, uh, but the how, I think it's it's a brilliant way to put it and also calling for in line with the, what the, the DG of Ripe Weather already mentioned. You know, it, it takes a broader community uh, together and uh, and thank you so much for for also uh, putting the finger on that very important question and I and I, I feel that we are on a winning streak and uh, now I'm I'm going to give the floor to uh, 
um, Mr. Heik um, I tried to rehearse the name, but it's it's not an easy one. And I think that it can help us also to deepen our understanding on the private sector role in fostering innovation to empower women and girls. Jan Willem, the floor is yours. Great. Well, thanks very much. Let me start with saying that there is so much opportunity in partnership right now, uh, especially for women and girls. Uh, and that is in part because we are at that half time, as Matthias says, of the SDGs. But it's also because we are coming out of the crisis. Now, during the COVID crisis, we saw incredible partnership around, uh, around a common purpose, namely get rid of this pandemic. And what you see now that companies, any self-respecting company, is realigning its purpose to a societal goal. And it loves partnership, SDG 17, and it loves innovation. So how do we harness that to get more innovation into SDG 3 and in particular women and girls? Now, we have Philips have a great partnership as UNFPA, started off on a rocky road, exploring how to best forge a deep and trusted partnership. And in that partnership, it was really important that we all brought everybody's potential to the table. And from UNFPA side, you know, the strategic partnership branch and the technical division and the country teams all rallied behind their common purpose of delivering more innovation for women and girls, asking and challenging Philips to bring everything they got to the table as well. And it's in that challenge that we forged a partnership in, in Congo Brazzaville at the moment where we're testing that. And that's in innovative in three ways. One, the role that UNFPA has taken up in this partnership is to be a broker of trust and a convener of parties, including the private sector, siding on the government side, ensuring that maternal and newborn child health improves for every woman and girl in the country. And that role is really, really critical, that convening of uh, power and that uh, broker of trust. Second, there's innovation in financing. Luxembourg also mentioned this before how important this is. There's a lot of cash in the healthcare system, but it is not accessible, it's not transparent. You need to change that business model to make this more sustainable. So there's innovation in financing. And then thirdly, of course, our core competence is there's innovation in technology, technology to bring, to improve maternal health, and, 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 and a child care, care. And in that platform, if you have a trusted ecosystem with a trusted facilitator in a business model that works and a system that delivers healthcare, you suck in more innovation. And that is the type of innovation where I think the equalizer fund of the UNFPA can bring in more innovation to a functioning system like that. Now, let me close by saying how powerful and how important this, this partnership is and congratulate UNFPA for forging partnerships in a way that no other UN organization has done that. UNFPA has challenged and asked us in a way that really appeals to our core strengths in, in better ways than any other UN organization has done it. So it's in the question, how do, you, how do you ask the question to the private sector of what you can do? And what do you ask the private sector what it can do? So I encourage the UNFPA, the game-changing innovation that you have at your disposal is keep on asking. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. I think it's. Um, I think we are up for your uh, challenge. I think <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, not going to talk on behalf of the whole organization, but I think that was a, a great pitch. And, and thank you for the uh, for the kind words. It's very heartwarming to see that the work we've been doing for women and girls, and always trying to leverage on new initiatives, it really um, it really pays. And and also. Thank you for providing us with, with a better understanding how this private sector perspective on how innovation can uh, break down the barriers. And now, last but not least, I'm going to give the floor to uh, Doreen Bogdan Martin. And, and she's going to pitch IQ's perspective on how to remove barriers for women and girls and how to increase their rights and choices. Uh, Doreen, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Um, I guess the, the beauty of being last is I can say I agree with all of the previous interventions. Um, but I, I do believe that promoting access to digital technologies for women and girls, I think, is the single most powerful intervention that we can make in breaking down barriers and also giving women and girls more agency over the shape of their of their lives. I want to focus on, on the why, because digital can help us leapfrog so many of the chronic blocks to female empowerment. Right now, we have a chronic 
digital gender gap, particularly in the world's poorest nations where only one in five women has access to the internet. And a smartphone, a tablet, or a laptop puts the whole world in a girl's or a woman's pocket. Of course, it gives her a window to knowledge and a chance to reach out and connect with others, build her own community. And digital can deliver educational opportunities. We know that are so critical to a girl's future. We know that millions of girls were tragic, tragically deprived of these opportunities during COVID because they could not access online schooling. This, of course, is linked to, to Darren's pitch, which I fully support. Digital can also offer employment opportunities, even in the most remote communities. We're seeing positive results of our work in Burundi, in Haiti, in Ethiopia, where we're helping women bring their textiles or their coffee to market through digital skills training. Letitia, this wonderful woman from Burundi that we're working with, explained that having access to digital technologies increased her productivity and competitiveness. Digital can bring crucial, vital health information to women and girls who may lack that ready access to health professionals. And this speaks particularly, of course, to UNFPA's priority area of reproductive health, a point that was brought home to me when I was on a, a mission to Africa. I spoke with a leader of a local YWCA, and she was explaining that digital devices are a godsend for women and girls that are seeking information on reproductive health because most are too afraid to seek that information face to face. Of course, in that space, we've seen some great uses of digital tools like SafePal in Uganda to combat sexual violence, like the HOPE initiative in, Tanz in Tanzania that's using digital champions to tackle FGM. But I think we can do so much more. That's why back in 2016, we created the Equals Global Partnership. I'm gonna emphasize Jan Willem's comment on partnerships with leaders from UN Women, ITC, UNU, and GSMA. We have about 100 partners so far, and we're working together to close the digital gender gap to help girls and women become leaders and creators in the tech sector so that that tech is actually adapted to women and girls needs. We run tech for girls programs that include also an, a, a mentoring um, aspect. And of course, we want to promote digital skills. A great example was um, Enno, who was one of our first African girls can code participants. At the age of 15, she and her fellow coders built a drone to help dispense medicine in, in rural areas. So the sky's the limit, but we have to do more. So when it comes to improving the rights and the choices of women and girls, I think it's partnerships around digital solutions that's going to be key. And that's what I would love UNFPA and its equalizer partners to get more involved in. Thanks very much. And bring and bring the the digital gaps, and uh, it's also um, something very critical for all the programs that we are leading. Thank you so much for positioning that, and also for mentioning the power of partnerships and how our equalizer is really um, setting forth a very ambitious, but also a very hands-on agenda. And now, because we've all been very well behaved, we have time for a very quick but final uh, round of uh, of questions. And I would like to ask all of you what you think global society needs to make uh, to make the innovations you've pitched a reality. And I would start by um, that and thank the DG of WIPO again. Dr. Thank Jenner. you so much, Monica. Yeah. Uh, and thanks to all my fellow panelists for, for sharing your thoughts. I think it's clear accessibility to the internet uh, underpins all of the things that my fellow speakers have been saying. I think that's one. Uh, secondly, is partnerships. We can't do this alone. So we need to partner across the UN agencies, across the UN programs, uh, and 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 with private sector and with civil society. Uh, and I think these these are going to be critical success. So I would say accessibility to internet, uh, and then partnerships, right, across a variety of stakeholders. These two elements are going to make uh, these aims and objectives we have a reality. Thanks. Thank you so much, um, DG Matthias. Would, would you want to get next, please? The floor is yours. You're muted. The more, ah, the more I look at the viability of achieving the global goals on sustainable development, the more for me, 
the role of UNFP um, uh, becomes crucial. Um, I think access to family planning, focusing on women and girls is the priority in order for us to even have a shot of achieving the global goals on sustainable development. So what we need in my book is a business commitment to help closing the access gap. In our case, for example, uh, we will help closing the access gap to modern family planning so that we have the right amount of uh, family planning opportunities to then satisfy the needs. But we also need um, a government commitment uh, to stick to funding. We see ups and downs in government funding in the space. If people seriously want to achieve the SDGs, they need to invest in this space and they need to encourage um, other governments to chime in. So for me, that's a crucial one uh, looking at, uh, for example, what we've seen in recent years in ups and downs of investments. More commitment is needed in order for us to achieve this. And I'm, I, I think the word, just, just to add, Matthias, the, the word that you use, investment, is really a key to be understood. It, it's not a cost. It's, a, it's, it's an a, investment. It's an investment. Invest in achieving the SDGs in my book. Thank you for highlighting that. It's, it's, it's very important. And now, Jan Willem. Jan Willem. So what, what I see is that um, governments around the world are trying to invest in healthcare now that they've seen that during COVID, their health systems actually didn't work. And they'll also see that it didn't work for certain groups like women and girls. But next to that willingness to invest in the healthcare system and that money that's going to flow into the healthcare system, there is actually a lack of a plan. And what you see governments do is they're investing to invest in old solutions that they, you know, and, and old ways of fixing the healthcare system. And what we now need is a partnership where we look at the entire healthcare system along the WHO governance models, if you like, the, the governance, finance, service delivery, people, staff, uh, technology and data to see what is needed in my country to actually improve health outcomes in particular for women and girls, that lens. And that plan, every, every country will know that the plan they had before COVID is no longer sufficient. And now as countries are coming out of the COVID crisis, now is the time to make that plan. UNFPA can help many of those countries to provide uh, assurances that women and girls lenses are taken up in that plan and then convene all the other partners so that we can develop proper plans that deliver meaningful innovation for better outcomes. As we build forward better, make sure also we have included the voices of women and girls. Also a point very well taken. Thank you, Van Willem. And last but not least, um, the final word in this panel goes to uh, Dorian. Thank you. So I, I think I'd like to stress partnerships, partnerships, partnerships. I do think we need to get everybody on board. We need all hands on deck. We need a whole of government approach, a whole of society approach. And I absolutely agree that we, we also need a whole of, of, of UN approach. And I think our common agenda provides a, a good framing of how we can, we can take this forward. Um, I like the point about it's got to be business unusual because of this business as usual. We're never going to get there. And I do think it's time to be bold. On our side, we've broken this down into focusing on people, communities, ecosystems, and investment. And we've created something called Partner to Connect and hope you'll join us in that endeavor. But it's about pledging and committing so that we can actually move the needle on women and girls empowerment and of course on, on closing the digital divide. Thank you. Thank you so much, and um, I think this panel was already um, business unusual. And, and if this was really a, a competition, it would be very hard to choose the winner because I think the winning solution is all your pitches brought together. And it was really inspiring to see how um, you all came together, not being coordinated before because really um, it's on leveraging partnerships that we will move this agenda forward. Thank you so much for this very interesting discussion and for these very thought provocative uh, pitches. And I think UNFPA is going to take you all on that uh, as we move forward. Thank you so much. And before.
And before proceeding to panel three, we will return to our live whiteboard also to assess the progress so far. And, and, and here it is, uh, leveraging the power of partnerships and removing uh, the barriers between women and girls and inequality. And I like the fact that it's a partnership that removes the barriers and, uh, and all the partnerships that are based on this um, thought um, challenges on this game-changing uh, innovations. And I think that this is a very nice uh, snapshot of what was being discussed. Partners, the power of partnerships, different partnerships, and also using a leverage to remove inequalities, to disrupt inequalities. And I think that if we need to um, move forward together, it's, um, it's the value of this joint actions. And I think with a very interesting mix of joint actions, as we've heard from our panels, from private sector, the government, the UN agencies, but also we all have a stake in uh, leveraging this partnership so that we can build a world with more dignity for all, so that we can remove the obstacles that prevent women and girls from accessing their rights and choices. And again, Pavel, spot on with your um, image, with the with how you captured the discussion that you just had here in the panel. And, uh, and I think this is also a good way to start our next panel. And, uh, and before we uh, call our final panel, we are going to take a look at the pioneering project that articulates ancestral wisdom with maternal health and statistical services in Colombia. We're going to take a look at Partera Vital. <laughs> Hasta la actualidad atendió 7400 partos. Pues nada más más ahora voy ya nada más da gira comunidad de que de ahora el proyecto Partera Vital busca dos dos objetivos principales. Por un lado, la articulación de las parteras tradicionales del departamento del Chocó con los servicios de salud y por otro lado busca la articulación de estas parteras con los servicios de estadística y registro. Cuando el UFPA nos llegó con este ejercicio de partera vital para un trabajo, un proyecto con la partera, yo vi una oportunidad grandísima. Con este piloto, con este proyecto, la partera va a tener un aplicativo, va a ingresar la información del niño que nace y va directamente al DANE. Debería de haber un unión entre la partera tradicional y la occidental, porque hay cosas de que nosotros las parteras sabemos que los médicos no saben, y hay cosas que los médicos saben que en otras partes no saben. Entonces, trabajando de la mano, se complementa todo esto y entonces es algo que, bueno, mejor dicho. Eh, yo, no, yo no soy semilla. Usted sabe que hoy está uno vivo y mañana cruza las paticas. Entonces, querando ellas, ellas siguen. Para mí ha sido una experiencia muy linda. Nosotros hemos desaprendido para aprender. This is an innovation, bringing different knowledges from different times, from different perspectives together. We're always there to innovate for women and girls. And now I also have the, the privilege to welcome our Deputy Executive Director, Diane Keita. Diane, welcome. You are joining us for our um, last part of the, of the conversation. Thank wow. you. One of our most innovative leaders. Um, and now, as we enter our final panel discussion on innovations by women for women and how we can empower women and girls entrepreneurs to maximize impact. And this one, this panel will also have a different twist to it. So instead of asking questions, which we are all, you, you are all tired of, the panelists will pass the mic where they will ask each other the questions. So joining us for this interactive discussion, we are very pleased to welcome our Goodwill Ambassador, Natalia Bodianova, Nina Ote, she's co-founder of Memoria Digital Afro, and also Anna Zaleski mori she's the head of partnerships in She Trades Initiative in the International Trade Center. So to get the conversation rolling, I will 
ask the first question. And my first question is directed to our goodwill ambassador, Natalia Vodianova. Natalia, you have supported so many startups and entrepreneurs throughout your career. What do you think is the key empowering factor for success? The floor is yours, Natalia. Thank you, Monica. It's such an honor to be part of this uh, round table. For me, there is one crucial aspect that I always encourage young entrepreneurs and startups to focus on. What uh, is your business really trying to solve? I ask myself the same question when choosing if investing or not investing into a business, because it's so important that young entrepreneurs clear in their mind that they don't need to build a successful business only, but a successful business on a mission, tackling a real issue of in, in the real world. If this message goes through, then I really feel I'm providing a key empowering factor to this, uh, to this business, to this startup. Let me give you an example. I've recently met a young woman entrepreneur who decided to launch an underwear brand called Cuckoo. And uh, the reason why I decided to support her and, and invest in her company is her will to redefine the narrative of female intimates. Uh, for too long, really, women have had to choose between comfort and beauty, feeling either comfy in granny panties or sexy and desirable in stuffy underwire, but never really both at the same time. When it comes to our, our underwear, the long-held belief is that comfort and cuteness cannot coexist. And Cuckoo wants to change that, building a new narrative on a stronger truth. As women, we feel most beautiful when we are our most comfortable. And if you get that, that's when you're truly empowering other women, helping them understand that in order to enjoy femininity, they don't have to compromise on comfort just to feel, just to feel more attractive to men. <laughs> And this brand uh, reflects on values of new generation of women that want to feel proud of, of their body. It provides an alternative to the outdated um, underwear uh, lingerie dichotomy. And because the truth is, we can be engaged and empowered in our daily lives all while feeling beautiful. So that proves the point about building a successful business on a mission. We definitely don't need another underwear brand, but we need someone readdressing the correct message around female intimates. The beauty of, of all this is that different women have different points of view on how to empower other women. By supporting these diverse visions, we are on the good path to slowly dismantle this patriarchal system of our world where women have been put into categories of either sexual object of, or procreating machines. And that's the new world where all, we all want to live in, especially the youngest generations. Um, interesting enough, uh, the young generations also have the same expectations from companies and charities because in today's world, both sectors are suppo supposed to create impact uh, with exact the same responsibility. So a charitable organization needs to have a clear mission, but also a sharp strategy, employing skilled professionals just as a classic company looking to do. They have to be entrepreneur in their approach, and most of all, they have to be accountable. Companies on their end can't just uh, sell products for the sake of being profitable and bringing income to their shareholders. They have to carefully wonder why they exist and what is the real problem that they're here to solve, like I, I mentioned in the beginning. And both sectors in the future have to aim to improve those areas and find the right balance. And I believe this is uh, an expectations of the next generation of con consumers or, or donors and um, 
really this is uh, something very important to keep in mind for any uh, young uh, young person uh, girl or, i mean man or woman starting uh, a new business or a new cause so I choose to support equally both uh, startup, startups on a meaningful mission or charitable organizations. One of the startups that I'm supporting uh, is, as an example, is Flow. Um, it's got my interest because on top of being a period tracker app, it supports young girls in better understanding their body and health. But um, I also... Uh, support, for example, uh, Special Olympics International, which is uh, the world's largest sports organization for children and adults with intellectual disabilities, as well as um, Naked Heart Foundation, uh, a, a charity that I founded myself to support uh, children with special needs and their families. So both uh, these organizations are, of course, non-for-profit, but they tackle concrete social issues and they couldn't really do it successfully if they had no growth strategy or if they were not ready to be effective and as accountable for each dollar they spend as a real business does uh, when it, it creates profit. So um, for me, last but not least, UNFPA represents exactly uh, this effective organization of doers that I'm so proud to support uh, and this innovation forum, it's exactly a, a, a perfect example of us having a meaningful exchange and constructive dialogue. Um, and it's creating uh, a vision aiming to support a real change in our society. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that the point came across. And I have a question. For Nina Otey. Hi, Nina. <laughs> and congratulations on everything you do. Amazing, um, uh, amazing to see such a young face tackling uh, real issues and uh, and having start having a startup with uh, that's clearly have a, uh, a good mission. So this is my question to you. Of course, you are an energetic, creative young person with innovative mind and great ambitions. And how do you think big organizations like the United Nations and others can help you and other young people to realize your ambitions? Thank you, Natalia. And thank you to the organization to having me here. I'm so pleased. So. I do think that the keys are tools, opportunities, and resources. Like me, there are millions of women and girls with great ideas to carry out projects that will benefit their communities. As a project manager who encourages African descendant young women to fulfill their uh, ambitions, I have noticed, and also the statistics indicate that most of them are highly prepared and studied. The problem lies in their approach to tools and resources, as I said before. They all know what they want and even have the know-how, but they don't know how to access to grants and receive the necessary funds to achieve their goals. Our girls need more educational programs that have identity as a transversal axis. They need to know our story of resilience and achievements. Otherwise, they won't be able to make a real change. Another key is technological innovation. The COVID pandemic accelerates and increases the, their technological skills young women to need to be prepared on ICTs and design thinking to develop ideas that can be sustainable in time. With that said, girls need to create projects with a technological approach. Some, some examples of innovation and ambitions are platforms like Memoria Digital Afro and Daughters of Alquebulan, made for women and by women. Our main goal is to teach and prepare young women with a sense of belonging, knowing their identity and impacting in their communities, creating social ventures using ICTs. Last and not less important, I think that women and girls need to have access to role models, successful women and empowered women like entrepreneurs, mothers, artists, activists, 
scientists, etc., who can follow up on their personal projects, give them opportunities to rise and to fail, and advise them as big sisters to be courageous and don't give up on their dreams. And thank you. So I have a question for our next panelist, Ms. Aleski Mori. Hi, Anna. So Hello. What do you think is the most impactful way to support young girls like me to get a good start with our ideas and bring our innovations to market? Thank you, Nina. Thank you so much. Congratulations for, for your business and your courage. And, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Pleasure to be here. So, Nina, I, I don't know whether there's one most impactful thing. Uh, the previous panel spoke about important topics such as digital, policy, education, finance, partnerships. They are all super relevant. But with, with my mindset and where I come from, what I know is, is that innovative ideas are nothing without execution. So once you have a business idea, you need many things to bring it to market successfully, right? You need to develop your innovative idea into something viable. And for that, you need information, guidance, investors, and access to, to, to markets. As a new entrepreneur and women entrepreneur, young women entrepreneur, you may feel lost on where to go and find this information to understand your local world, target destination, market needs, landscape, preferences, how to, how to navigate the rules and regulations of your uh, local country to import or export goods, for example. So a good way, I would say, to support young girls like, like, like you, right, to, to bring your innovations to, to market is to consolidate all this information in one place in a very simple manner where you can find tools, opportunities, as you're saying, to, to, to springboard your ideas into feasible businesses and, and access markets. At ITC, she trades, it's the United Nations agency. And I believe this is why uh, UNFPA invited me uh, to this panel. We aim to connect women to markets, women and girls to markets. And one of our offerings is our online platform called shetrades.com. This is where women entrepreneurs like yourself, and I would love, actually, I took note to, to exchange uh, lessons with you uh, regarding the Memoria Digital Afro, but on shetrades.com, it's our tool that we created where you can find, you can join an international network of women entrepreneurs in the same sectors as yourself. You can find accelerators, incubators, connect to chambers of commerce in your country, access financiers and impact investors. And, and, and most important, I would say also on, on shetrades.com, you can develop your idea, your idea. You can test how the feasibility by getting feedback from industry experts that are also present on the platform or just start a group discussion with other women entrepreneurs in the same sector and learn how to create a, you know, a, a business plan through our virtual learning area. We also organize plenty of trade fairs. We take delegation of women entrepreneurs, girls entrepreneurs to these uh, trade fairs. We organize both uh, delegations to participate in online or in-person trade fairs where innovative ideas in each one of the sectors basically is, is, is discussed, right? Another thing that we try to do and, 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 and bringing a bit the point of Doreen from ITU is the importance of, of partnerships. So we have around 300 partners such as DHL, or Mary Kay, eBay, or UPS, UPS, the logistics companies, is giving 40% discount in shipping services for networks of women entrepreneurs. So we need to be aware of what is available in the market as well when you start with an innovative idea. And I close by saying that this revamped version of SheTrades.com is to be launched at the International Women's Day for obvious reasons. It's free of charge, it's a United Nations public good, so, so ladies that are hearing me and aspiring to be entrepreneurs, there are many organizations doing their bids out there, not only ITC, but UN Women, UN FPA, ITU, ILO, many local institutions like Memoria uh, Digital Afro. So don't be afraid, go after what you need, go after your answers. Uh, sometimes we spend a lot of time, I tell a lot because I work directly with the women entrepreneurs in, in, in some countries, I tell, uh, I, I see a lot of time spent in social media channels, uh, basically doing nothing, right? So we need to also do our homework well and enjoy a network and, and you have high chances to, to succeed. So thank you, Nina. 
Anna, I think that we all took a lot of notes from what Natalia said, what Nina said, what you said yourself, and I think this was really inspiring. And this is why we're going to carve time to ask you for a final comment. I would like to ask each one of you a final commitment. What a final message to share with everyone who's listening to us, either a young entrepreneur, a woman who's looking for access to market, or someone who has a wonderful idea but really feels overwhelmed with what needs to be done to put that idea in practice. And I will start with you, Natalia. One final comment that you want girls and women to hear and you want governments and companies to hear too. Um, well, I also would, uh, would, uh, would support this uh, idea of partnerships, but I also, we, we hear so much about um, so much about women and girls and it's definitely on uh, top of everyone's um, agenda it feels like uh, this this year and, and last year but we we do need to not shy away from uh, collaborating um, and asking for much more help not only from each other but also uh, but also from from men, you know, men are good. Um, uh, they've, it, it, they they are happy to share with us, and we just uh, uh, we need to bring that change, uh, especially when it comes to women issues. We need to communicate with our with our husbands, bring them on board, our sons. I have four boys. Uh, to bring to speak to them about girls' issues and 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 the gap that there there is to 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 be met, um, men at work and yes, it's all good to stick together and definitely this is something that women need to learn to do better, but also we just need to um, we just need to also rely on uh, on our partners uh, in life and at work that are male and get them involved as well and and feel responsible for meeting that gap very good message passed through <laughs> uh nina do you want to go next uh, thank you monica i agree with natalia uh we need to teach young boys about the gender gap and the lack of opportunities for young girl and women but my personal commitment is to mentoring and guiding uh, girls to develop their ambitions. Um, I believe in education and role modeling and uh, with the projects I had created already, uh, I think I can mentor these girls to success and achieve their goals. And I do it with Daughters of Alkebulan, it's another of my projects and I will continue to do it. And we will be here for you too. And now, Anna. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So, so Monica, uh, my, my daily work is to find ways to support aspiring women entrepreneurs or established women entrepreneurs succeed, especially from developing countries. I do see um, the digital gender divide as a big gap towards supporting women and girls becoming not only receivers of technology, but creators of innovation and technology. So I would say that my commitment would be to push internally in my agency and ensure that digitalization and, in, and leadership are the um, place at the heart of our business model and to push and also policymakers to mainstream gender into digital trade governance. I also would like to call on women and girls that are and men in the audience today um, to, if you're a techie savvy, to select one woman that you know that struggles with technology and the digital world and, and support her, put her as your you know, target for you to help. Uh, I know that there are fewer, there are 250 million fewer women than men online in the world. We are talking about a country as big as Brazil being offline. So I would say that I will invite everyone to uh, help us change this scenario together. So thank you, Monica. So I think that um, all your ideas are very inspiring. All your commitments are properly noted down. And I think this is a journey. And I have to say that we wouldn't want to be in better company than, than yours. Thank you so much for this. Uh, it's been wonderful. And it's been a lot to, um, to take away. But um, with your commitments, I think that um, 
innovation is around the corner and we can really do what Natalia told us to do. We can set a sail and find our new um, our new path. And uh, we will now, thanking you uh, all, we will now return to our live whiteboard one final time to see how our session has progressed. And again, um, innovations by women for women, empowering and maximizing the impact. And this is one of the key messages that we really want everyone to, uh, to take away uh, as we wrap up this session, is that women need to support other women and women need to be encouraged to move forward. And this is not only a matter of human rights, it's not a matter of choice, it's what makes sense. It's the rational economic uh, decision. It's also what will allow us to deliver on the SDGs. And I think that this idea of maximizing the impact of innovation, it's also very critical. And many of our panelists spoke to that. And our three last panelists made very specific commitments uh, on this. And I think that we couldn't ask also for a better wrap up to our conversations on this live whiteboard. Um, we will end up with a very nice messages to illustrate our discussion and what a discussion this was. And um, there's so much to take away and continue our thinking. But before we move to the concluding segments of this panel, let us watch the last video that we have uh, in store for you. And it's one presenting a UNFP innovation. It's a project that uses drones to transport maternal health medicines to rural Benin and you will see how game-changing it is. Quand il n'y a pas les drones, le plateau technique est défaillant et rapidement nous Nous procédons à l'évacuation du patient pour le centre de santé de Kero. Cela prend assez de temps et la femme peut en mourir sur la voie. That concludes our Global Innovation Roundtable. And I think I can speak on everyone's behalf by saying that it has held at some very interesting perspectives. We have all seen that innovation is not just a noun, it's a verb. It's a use, it's a word used to describe an action. Innovation is indeed key to accelerate UNFPA's pledge of achieving a world with zero maternal death, zero unmet need for family planning, and zero gender-based violence and harmful practices towards women and girls. It's also vital to put together actors from a wide array of sectors, cross societal, cross government, and combine their competitive advantages to empower women and girls and achieve sustainable change. And with that, it's my honor to invite Vien Keita, our Deputy Executive Director, to conclude this fascinating session herself, an innovative and a person very much committed to innovation. Dear Diane, you have the floor. Thank you, Monica, for a brilliant moderation. Uh, distinguished guests, colleagues, partner and friends, really thank you for joining us today for such an insightful and thought-provoking -provo discussion. Avemos desaprendido per aprender. I love that quote from our uh, video earlier on. The last panel, Natalia, Nina, Anna, you do respond so brilliantly to the late fashion editor, Leon Andre Talley famous quote, people need to be edited, life need to be edited. And we can add as UNFPA for a new normal, for a better normal. So helping promote innovative way to support young girls, that is truly maximizing the impact. We heard about some amazing innovation underway in different sector and part of the world. 
let's take these inspiring ideas and integrate them into our roadmap for achieving the three zeros at the heart of UNFP strategic plan. A world with zero unmet need for family planning, zero preventable maternal death, and zero gender-based violent and harmful practices. At UNFPA, we are committed to harness innovation to meet tomorrow's challenges and address the needs of those furthest behind. We look forward to working with partners like you to leverage the opportunities, social capital, funding, and technology needed to get the job done. We know that without innovation, the world cannot get back on the path to achieving sustainable development goals. So let's keep our eyes on the prize and stay focused on improving the lives and future of the millions of women and girls who are counting on us. The recommendations heard today will help us foster innovation and creativity by leveraging our collective brain power across the world development, finance, technology, academia. We will continue to learn from one another and scale up what works. Together, we can move the needle and tackle the suburban inequality, undermining the health and rights of women and girls. And we can do this through UNFPA's Equalizer Accelerated Fund, which will invest in promising innovation that can reach those furthest behind. We look forward to your continued support and to our growing partnership to galvanize action and investment needed to ensure rights and choices for all. It will take all of us to mobilize transformative change. It starts today, it starts with us. Let's maximize every impact. I thank all of you for your participation.